Hello. This is going to be a 90s nostalgia video. So, shouts out. Shout out to all my 90s and early 2000s people out there. Because this is going to contain some items from the 90s and early 2000s. So, that I still have. I actually still have my VHSs. And I have Blu-rays and DVDs, but... I have a little something from... Basically, I guess, all times since the 90s. I was born in 1994. So the 90s hold that nostalgia for me. So, I thought I would show this as well. This is my Winnie the Pooh, the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh VHS tape. And I still have this, obviously, I've kept all my Poohs, whether it be, VH, whether it be VHSs, DVDs, whatever. So, and this actually included bonus footage. Whoops, bonus footage right here. So, this is the uh, movie was released in 1968. Well, all of, all of these shorts, The Blustery Day, Winnie the Boo and the Blustery Day, was released in 1968. So, three cheers for Winnie the Pooh. Exactly right. Wistful, sp bright, uh, sprightly, and often hilarious. So, this is the um, special commemorative edition of the original feature-length movie. The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh holds a special place in my heart. And I thought with a new Winnie the Pooh movie coming out on August 3rd of this year, which is my birthday, by the way, so I'm really excited about that, that uh, somehow or other it always correlates with either my birthday or my granny's birthday, which my granny passed away in 2005. But somehow or other, there's always some sort of a poo movie. Uh, whenever they do release poo movies, it always somehow relates to my birthday, me or my granny somehow. So, I'm really excited for the new Winnie the Pooh movie coming out on August 3rd, which is my birthday. And this is the actual tape. Back from the time when you had to rewind every tape that you, everything you watched, you had to rewind it back to the beginning. I've gone through VHS's, DVD's, I think they even had uh, Betamax, but the VHS's and then in 1999 the DVD's came out. And then after that there were Blu-ray discs and then now it's the cloud, the internet, so. They had many DVD's and HD DVD's also, but if you are familiar with this, let me know. Whoops. I've got to put the batteries back in there. The fire button actually quit, but this right here brings back a lot of nostalgia. A whole lot of nostalgia. Um, this kept me entertained for a long time in the 90s and early 2000s. Back before, well, guess what? It didn't have to, you didn't, you didn't have to update it. You didn't have to update the devices of the 90s. There were no app updates and it didn't take up memory, so. You try to avoid the fire, the, uh, you try to avoid, I got hit, but the fire button stopped working, so. So obviously, um, you have three chances, basically, you have three chances to either get hit or, um, you have three, three lives, basically, three lives on this game, 
and if you get hit three times, you lose. So basically, I just lost because there's no fire button. It doesn't work anymore. The fire button stopped working a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, but I'm sure, I don't know, but this is kind of like the Space Invaders. This is like the Space Invaders game. So I'm sure all the 90s and early, early 2000s people out there are familiar with this. And that's the off button. So, yeah. Take the battery out. Oops. Yeah. So, I'm sure you're familiar with that. If you're not familiar with it, then you don't know what I'm talking about. But let me know if you, uh, let me know if you remember those. And there's this thing. I never really use this much, but it's this uh, super mouse thing. I forgot what it came with. It was this thing that supposedly supposedly had. If I can get this open, wow, that's having a hard time getting it. Ah, I finally got it open. So this supposedly had 576 games. So. This had, this claimed to have had 576 and one, a games calculator. It was a calculator and a gaming device. You just put batteries inside there. And of course the batteries are really old at this point. I haven't used this device in many, 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 many years. So this is up, down, and uh, game level, speed. There's, there's various games there, sound, the games are available there and rotate your direction. I think it had Tetris or, or Super Tetris or something. It had all kinds of things, but that was the screen, and yeah, that was the uh, 90s entertainment, 90s and early 2000s. This might have been early 2000s. And I know my Nana, my grandparents got me this for Christmas when I was little. This is a baseball game, and I believe it was 1996, maybe maybe early 2000s, but the lights would light up right there, it's very dusty, it was in the drawers, but the, um, the lights would light up and let you know, like, where the ball was at, and um, all of that, basically. That's the buttons, it's off Pro 1, Pro 2, right there, and then there's the score button, pitch, sound, run, and hit. Basically the baseball was represented by this light. All of this was represented by the, the lights and the numbers would show up there, the number of innings, outs, balls, and strikes. And it says visitors and home right there. So, by Mattel. And I still have this. I obviously have not used it in a long time, but I still have it. So, yeah. I also have something else that it did not require batteries. And whoops, I don't want to lose the phone there. But it did not require batteries. It was just a fun little thing that basically it was a bath time thing. Sonic the Hedgehog bath bubbles. And you would press these buttons here. You put soap in the top. You put soap right in there and fill that up with soap and play the game by making these things here move and try to get them all in um, these correct things here, the uh, spikes or whatever they are. You have to get them all onto these and that's how you score in this game. And you press these buttons and it would pressure, pressurize and get it in there. And this thing did not require any batteries, obviously, not like modern devices, it didn't require power, it didn't require um, updates or anything like that. It was just a fun little thing that, I from the 90s, basically. And, uh, yeah, by Sega. I'm going to use these in a future video. So it tells you how to play, just squeeze a dab of bubbles, um into running water and then watch the bubbles grow 
Uh, yeah. And it's from 1998. Let's see if it'll focus. From 1998. So, I played with this a lot growing up. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I played with that a lot growing up. I keep these in a drawer. I guess nostalgia. I, mean, I just keep them. So, nostalgia's really big right now, isn't it? Um, so, these also... I played this and a NASCAR racing game also quite a bit. Um, in the early 2000s. So... This is Pokemon Battle Stadium. Well, I thought it was Battle Stadium, but Pokemon Stadium. And that was the game chip. That was the chip right there, the cartridge. This is the game cartridge, and this for Nintendo 64. So, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you were a 90s and early 2000s child, then you probably know what I'm talking about and are aware of these type of mobile gaming devices. Space Invaders, um, Pac-Man, and all of that, and the Pokemon Stadium games, the NASCAR games, basically the uh, any type of games for Nintendo 64. Those were the graphics of the day, and those were really cutting edge and a big deal. And they still are to me because of the because of the nostalgia that they hold. They're not like other devices like these now where you have to um, update them constantly. So, modern devices, you have to do a lot of updating and it just takes up all of the memory. So there's this and this is the game cartridge for the Nintendo 64 and this right here, little portable, portable Space Invaders game. The fire button has stopped working though. And this classic baseball game, and you play it based on where the lights, the red lights would go. I didn't play this too much, but it was a Christmas gift from my grandparents on my daddy's side, so. But I still have it. I think it was late 90s this was made. So, yeah. And this right here, it came with something, but I forgot what... This was also a gaming device of the day. I have, I still have my my uh, Game Boy Advance SP, but I don't know where that's at. It's a little pouch. It has basically basically miniature versions of these, and um, the miniature versions of these would could go in there. And it was like they also had shows, cartoons that you could put with them, and watch the shows on the go before micro SD cards and streaming and. Um, thumb drives and things like that and portable DVD players and things basically they uh, you had this I also had a portable DVD player from my childhood that I'd like to share as well and this was one of my favorites growing up right here this 1998 I was born August 3rd 1994 so my birthday's coming up and the Winnie the Pooh movie releases the new Christopher Robin Winnie the Pooh movie releases on my birthday. So I'm really excited for that. It brings back those it brings back those childhood memories. So I remember the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh series and I've always loved Pooh and Scooby Doo. I'll probably maybe I'll do some more videos very soon regarding that. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you these 90s items of mine. And with that being said, peace, love, and many blessings. And as always, sweet dreams. Good night, everyone. Sweet dreams.